Good morning, everybody. I am just hanging out in my kitchen. Just made some tea from some herbs from the garden and some from the Amazon that I get from Spirit Rising. Amazing herbs, Spirit Rising. Yes, getting a plug in there for them. Um, yeah, so I've made a lot of progress in my garden. I've been calling it a garden instead of a food forest because I don't feel like it's gotten to a forest just yet. And I'd like to take you guys out there and walk you around, show you what's going on. And let's go. All right, so here we are out front. And right behind me is my garden. And just to give you a little bit of background, I started this March 2019. And I started with a very simple little pallet garden on the side and just a few herbs and like some tomatoes and peppers and things like that. And now my whole front yard is a garden. So let's check it out. All right, so here we are in the garden, and I live in the suburbs, I guess you'd call it, in Melbourne, Florida. And this is just a regular size city lot out here, so nothing huge. But when you turn your whole yard into a garden, you have plenty of space to do all kinds of things. So we have some lemongrass over here. I'm putting a water feature over here we'll capture and store water and then feed it to the garden and get that going these are a lot of ornamentals that we had to begin with because this was just a regular florida manicured yard with the edging mulched against the house but yes here we have a mango tree and as you see the way i kind of have this i have it set up like this little bullseye kind of style so I have lots of wood chips piled up here because the wood chips hold in moisture and cover the weeds up and um, provide a lot of nutrients as they break down to the soil underneath. And I have the rocks around the tree here because you don't want the mulch against tree trunks because it'll rot the base. So I have it pretty cleared out so that it doesn't have a bunch of mulch around there. So that's something you want to make sure you don't want mulch up on your tree trunks here's some tithonia which is really good for your garden that's another video <laughs> so this is the original space that i started with was just this right here it was two pallets set on top of another pallet so it was two pallets stacked on top of each other and it was just this space and now i have all of this and it's been a year so this is longevity spinach got lots of that growing grows really good and easy got some Cuban oregano some uh, different types of oregano my rosemary is hanging in there I don't I don't seem to do so good at rosemary Oh, just because I garden doesn't mean I'm good at everything. You just got to find your plant. See, I got some cassavas here, but I don't think they're doing too good. I think they get too much shade, but they're still alive. So I'm going to leave them until I'm ready to move them. And then I'll move them into a better spot and they'll take off. I got a lemon. Got a coral tree. Got some Jamaican sorrel. I had some passion fruit vine back there, but it's starting to die. And this is Nopales cactus, edible. Got some Brazilian spinach. More tithonia. Very, very good for bringing nitrogen to your garden. Got some dragon fruit. Shampoo ginger. Another lemon tree lemongrass this is partridge pea good for feeding the soil 
jackfruit. Grew this from seed. We have black sapote hanging in there. Loquat hanging in there too. It was kind of bad timing when we planted them. There was this like crazy, windy, freezy day. But they're hanging in there. Got some more oregano, plumera, beautyberry, papaya. Papaya is a pioneer species. Papaya, sweet potato, cassava. Um, those are all really good things to plant in your yard in, like as soon as you begin because they don't require uh, much nutrients in the soil and they actually can create canopies that allow other things to grow underneath them. So we got some collards here, got some Haitian basket vine, some katuk, some bamboo, sweet potatoes, comfrey, more sweet potatoes, they just kind of grow everywhere. <laughs> Papaya, we have three papayas. Desert rose, desert rose. Mulberry, I grew this from a small twig. I took a propagated piece off of the tree. I went up to a very large tree and cut a piece, a woody piece that was about from here to about here. And I stuck it in a pot and now it's gotten so big and I've had to trim it a couple times to help it kind of um, grow off because otherwise it would just be like one big stick and it would get weighted and kind of fall over. So as it started growing, I would cut it to allow it to be more bushy and allow the roots to get more established. This is Avery the avocado. Sometimes I like to name my plants. And this was from a small piece from Rob Greenfield, one of Rob Greenfield's yards. And this is the toilet paper plant, also known as Blue Spur. And it's very, very beautiful. It grows like crazy. It started from a, a sprig about that big, and now it's this huge bush. I have endless amounts of toilet paper. Don't flush it. It's not good for the uh, drain. You'd want to compost it. And then here's the loofahs. I made a video on these the other day and I tr pruned them back like big time because we're trying to change this fence out. And as you can see, just from me pruning them back, when I came out yesterday morning, there was actually three new flowers. And that's how you know that the plant is still doing very well, ready to keep producing because that's when you're going to get more loofahs. There's another flower out there. I don't know if you could see it. Yes, and then we have a sugar apple. This one is doing really, really good. It lost all its leaves, and now all of this has grown back in just a few months. And the sugar apple, the black sapote, and the loquat were all part of Rob Greenfield's community fruit tree project. So these are community fruit trees, and once they start producing, I will put signs on them that let people know that they can harvest as they walk by. I also plan on getting like a dry erase board or a chalkboard out here so that once I continue to produce things that people in the neighborhood can walk by and see what's available and see, um, you know, what they can take. And I got to tell you guys, I mean, I put a lot of effort into it at the very, very beginning. And then with my hip and surgery and going away for a few months, there was about six months that nothing really happened out here and this is everything that has survived and flourished completely on its own and that is the intention of creating a food forest of or, or yarden is not so that you have to do all this work for the rest of the time that you have it but so that you can implement it and then allow it to do its own work and take care of itself with very very little human input other than you coming out and harvesting it and sometimes if you don't harvest it the uh squirrels and rabbits will <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed that video that's just a little tour of the yard in um, any specific questions that you have will give me good ideas for a next video to make like any plant that you saw that you'd like more detail about or any design that you see and you want to know why I did it that way 
drop a question in the comments and be sure to like and share if you like this video I'm gonna be making more and more videos I hope you guys enjoy them have a blessed day